Hi everybody, it's Scott here, and welcome to the next lesson uh, for our dual stick shooter game using Uscript. In this one we're going to set up the, the spawning of bullets for our player. And we're nearly finished with our, our player script really. So, um, first of all we're going to delete our bullet. This is because we already have a prefab under resources and um, bullet. So we don't actually need this uh, this uh, uh, bullet um, object. So what we want to do is we actually want to now set up our player so whenever we press a button on our keyboard, such as space, it will actually spawn a bullet right in front of the, uh, the, the player. Okay, so we're going to delete this. Um, and we're going to go into U script. So press Control and U for U script. And just come out of that. And we're going to go into our player script because this is going to happen with the player. And what we want to do is we're going to use another input event. Okay, so I'm just going to pull that back a wee bit. It's three seconds, sorry. And what we're going to do is we're going to have another input event filter. So we can literally just copy and paste this using Control and C, Control and V. Move this up. And I'm going to move this up quite a bit here because there's going to be a lot happening in this in this lesson, okay? So what we're going to have is whenever we press space, we should be able to type space there. Nope. If not, we just find it, which is there, space. So whenever space is pressed, we want something to happen. And we're going to we're going to start off um, using a quite a simple method. We're going to literally go spawn a prefab. That's how easy it is. We're going to spawn a prefab. So whenever the input is pressed down, it's going to spawn a prefab. Now the prefab name is bullet. And that should be it. Now you'll notice that there is a resource path. Um, it should default, and this is what's really important, it should default into a directory called resources. Now if you don't have that resources folder, you can run into issues. However, you can specify the resource path but it should do that for us um, by default. Okay, now the next thing we need to do is we need to actually tell the game where to spawn our object. Again, it's really, really important. So we can actually use this little red object here to spawn our bullet from here. And this was called the weapon, okay? This is also known as a muzzle flash point or a muzzle uh, point, okay? because of the, the muzzle of a gun, but we've just called a weapon in this case. So we can either drag in the weapon or we can find it here under game object, under scene, and we go to weapon. So now the bullet's going to spawn from the weapon. Okay. And that's it. That is it. Okay. So we're going to go file and save. That's how easy it is to do. So every time the space is being pressed down, it's going to spawn a bullet. As soon as that bullet spawns, it will then trigger, it'll actually make one of these bullets, and then it will run all the processes involved with the bullet. So it will add force and it will um, it'll add force and then it'll kill itself after a second. So let's see this in action. So we can look around and if we press space, it fires our bullet. We press it again and it kind of breaks. Okay. So we'll actually look into what's happening there. It's quite an interesting one. I haven't seen that one happen before. It's going to turn that off and hit play. Very interesting. So bear with me. Okay, folks. Um, so I've just um, just realized uh, I've done one thing incorrectly here. It's quite an easy mistake. So we're just going to go back into your script, control and new, and under our bullet script, because this is a prefab, we need to ensure that the on the graph start that the instance we are using is not the U script file, which is this guy here, the level. We need to ensure that this is the um, itself. It's actually using the the graph for the bullet as opposed to the the u script graph okay so we just need to go to variables and owner game object and just replace that so now it's using 
the the prefab instance graph so every time a bullet spawns it's using a new graph um previously what it was doing it was doing it in the use script so it was put on rail to force the lane and then destroy itself but whenever we actually fired the second bullet because it was already destroyed and um, it wouldn't do it so now because this is set to instance and owner game object each bullet is now um its own its own identity essentially so apologies for that and um, it took me about 20 minutes to um to figure out that easy um, mistake but there we have it so i'm just going to save this and compile so what's happening now is whenever we press the space bar it's spawning a bullet adding force and it's destroying it after a certain amount of time which is great now if you want your game to be like this if you press space and you keep hammering space down it will keep firing however you may want something a bit more um a bit more uh, complex such as um if you're holding down the space bar it will do a rapid fire and this is what we're going to be doing for our game because later on we're going to have some special pickups where it'll increase your rate of fire and things like that so let's have a look so let's jump back to our player script and um, you can actually see that I set this to player so I am um, this is actually fine because we're not actually using the player prefab anymore but um, let's have a look so what we're going to do is oops what we could have is we could delete this and we could have the input held down function spawn a prefab so whenever you're holding down the space bar it would spawn a bullet at the weapon point however because this is firing really really quickly every frame you're going to get a lot of bullets so let's just have a look and you'll see that we have a crazy spray of fire and you'll see that in our hierarchy we have tons and tons and tons of bullets being made and then destroying itself this can be a bit damaging to the performance it won't be too bad but this isn't what we want we want a bullet to fire maybe every half a second or every 0.2 seconds now this is actually quite tricky to do but i will show you exactly um a good method of actually going about doing it so what we're going to do is we're going to i'm going to introduce these to a new type of variable called the true and false variable also known as booleans so what we're going to do is we're going to delete this out and we're going to say if the input is being held down then the game then knows that the fire button is being held down and if we let go of the button then the game will know that we've let go of the button okay so what we're going to do is we're going to create a new variable we're going to right click and add a variable called um uh whoops uh, boolean or sorry bool so by default this is just a true or, or a false statement it's just a like a tick or a, an x really so by default it's called false or it's set to false and i'm just going to name this i'm going to call this fire held help held down and i'm going to put a question mark in there so is the fire button being held down no at the moment it's no okay i'm just going to copy and paste this here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put in a, a command called set bool so it's going to set this bool into something so if we hold down the space key it's going to set this boolean to either true or false so we want to set the true saying that yes change this to true so we're going to take this and put that into the target so whenever we hold down the space key it's going to set our this data type to true okay and then we're going to compare this data type or sorry before we do that i'm just going to click these two guys here by dragging i'm going to hit Control c and Control v to copy and paste them and I'm going to say if the input is then up, basically if we let go of the button, it's going to set this data type to false. So if the input is being held down, then this is being changed to true. If it's being released, if the key space is being released, then it sets it back to false. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to have what's called the compare boolean. It's going to compare a value, compare, and we can comp compare loads of different values. We can compare numbers we can compare uh, floats game objects so on and so forth but we want to compare this boolean so if the input is being held down 
Um, so if it is true, if it's been set to true, then we want to compare the boolean. And the boolean is going to be this guy here. So we're just going to copy and paste him. So if it's false, it's going to, it's not going to do anything. The, the, you're not going to fire anything. You're not going to spawn anything. However, if it is set to true, if this boolean is set to true, i.e. the space bar is being held down, then we want to spawn a prefab. Okay. And as soon as the prefab has finished spawning, okay, so this is doing it down one line. So space bar is being held, setting it to true, comparing it, comparing the space bar thing. So if it's being held down, it's true. And if it is true, then we're going to spawn a prefab, which is our bullet. It's being spawned from our player, from the little weapon point. And after it's spawned, then we want to put in a delay. And in this delay, we're going to hook up the finish spawning into there. And we're going to make a float. This is going to be our duration. I'm going to add a variable, which is going to be a float. And I'm actually going to give this a name because we're going to use it later on down the line. I'm going to call this fire rate. So this is basically the rate of fire of the gun. The higher it is, the longer it is between shots. So I think a good value for this is 0 0.2. And I am just going to copy and paste that in case I need it for later. So I'm going to plunk you in there, okay, now after the delay, after that 0 0.2 second delay, we are then going to throw you back into the compare of boolean um, button. So basically what's happening is after it's fired and it's waited 0 0.2 seconds, it's going to go back to see if we're still holding down the, the uh, space key and it knows if we're holding down space because we've made this boolean. Okay, so if it's if we're still holding down the space key, then it's going to fire it off again, and it's going to go back and compare it. So it's going to keep doing that loop. However, if we've then let go of false, then it's going to do nothing. It's just going to go back to default. Okay, and that is our um, that is basically our um, spawning mechanic right there. So if you're holding down space, it's going to set the tick to either true or false. Okay, if it's true, it's going to compare to see if it is true. And then it's going to spawn a prefab, wait for 0 0.2 seconds, and then it's going to go back and check to see if you're still holding down the space key. If you're still holding down the space key, then it's going to fire another one. If you're not holding down the space key, it's going to do nothing. Okay. And that is it. We're going to go file and save. That will compile the script. And I'm just going to move that across, or I'm just going to close it, sorry. And I'm going to hit play. So going to hold down space and you can see I'm now rapidly shooting and if I let go it stops. If I hold space again, shooting, let go it stops. Really straightforward. It's going to bring up use script while the game's still playing. I'm going to make the screen really small and just pay attention to this true and false, this uh, fire being held down button. If I hold it down, whoops, just need to go over here. If I hold it down, it's being set to true. Okay. So it's comparing that value, and yes, it is true. Whenever we let go, it goes back to false. So that is rapid fire. Now we're not done just yet. Let's do something quite uh, quite fun here. I'm going to close this down, and we are going to go to our player, and we're going to make a light. We're going to go component, sorry, game object, and we're going to create a little uh, point light. Okay. Sorry, that's a spotlight. I'm just going to change that to point light. I'm going to move it to around the, the front of the, 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 the guy like this. I'm going to make sure it's it's uh, zero, zero, 0. I'll just move that out again. Like so. So this is going to fire whenever the, 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 the bullet comes out. So I'm going to change the color to a reddish color, maybe an orangey tone. Like so. And then I'm going to do something pretty cool. I'm going to right click. I'm going to import a Unity package called uh, Lens Flares or Light Flares. And these are kind of default um, objects that come with Unity. So we're going to import the Light Flares and hit Import. And then we're going to go back to our light and choose a flare. We're going to choose, uh, choose any one you want. I'm going to go with the Sun Flare double click so now we have this cool little flare effect that's going to fire up whenever we fire a bullet 
like this. I'm going to call this a muzzle flash and I'm going to attach it to our player. Okay. Now we need a way of toggling this off and on during the game. So let's go back into script, controlling you. And what we're going to do is as part of our script here, we're going to right or we're going to search for the script event. Okay, so as soon as the graph starts and we can we can just put it here, it's fine. So as soon as the graph starts, we need to toggle this light to off. We need to turn it off by default, okay? So we're going to type in something called toggle. And this will let us toggle an object off or on. So as soon as the graph starts, we're going to toggle this off, like so. And the target is the light. So we're going to find our muzzle flash and drag that in. Place it as a variable called game object. So we're just going to go file and save. We're going to hit play. So by default, our light turns off. I'm going to go back in here and say, if that compare boolean is true, okay, then we want to basically turn on our light, like so. And then we want a delay. So we're actually just going to copy that delay and paste it. As soon as the light has been turned on, stick on the delay of about 0.1. So it'll only flash on for a second. And after the delay, we are going to then turn it back off again. So on graph starts, it's going to default the light to off. As soon as the space bar is held down, i.e. it's true, it's going to toggle the light on for 0.1 seconds. It's going to turn it back off. If comparable is still true, it's going to turn it on again. So it's literally going to flash this light, or it's going to flash our light off and on while the space bar is being pressed. Okay, so let's have a look. Our gun is off. If we hold down space, we now have a, a flashing light. If we let go, it turns off. Hold down space, turns on again. And the, you can just about see the lens flare. And what we can do very, very quickly is just change the intensity of the light to really bright, like so. And you can play around with this um, before going on to the next video. So there we have it, folks. We have a spawning uh, weapon. We have uh, bullets spawning. We have our weapon set to the space key. And we have lights uh, toggling off and on as well. And then in previous videos, we've done look at controls. We've done camera follow. And we've done, uh, of course, player movement as well. So hopefully uh, you're starting to get a feel for how Uscript is working and how uh, powerful it is. Okay, So I will see you in the, the next lesson.